All right. Working on the camera angle. All right, how are we looking? Pretty peachy. We finally have a nice day for it. Uh, I was back up here last weekend, but it was brutally hot weather and too hot to do anything. And throughout the entire week, it's been raining and I've been working anyway, but finally the weekend's come and we've got bright blue sky and a nice day to do things. So, this actually arrived two weeks ago. I could have done it last weekend, but as I say, it was too hot. That is the new drive belt for the Mark IV. I wonder what it did with it. I did have the old one. Uh, I wanted to hold them up and see if they were the same size, but I'm pretty confident. So, we'll go fetch the Mark IV out from under the house there. And we've got a few things to do before we can really ride it. But let's get that belt on and just make sure the engine's working before we do anything else. All right, so we have the tools we need to put on a new belt is a five mil uh, Allen key because there's four bolts behind the wheel. Now, all you might have to do is just rotate that wheel around to get to all four, not rocket science. Now we loosen those four because that, that's our tensioning key. Now there are notches in and around this plate. Um, basically you just hook that in there and pull it back to tighten it. You can do it by hand. You can do it by hand but it is a fair bit harder. So what we're going to do first is we're going to loosen it right off to make getting that brand new non-stretch belt on. Now, don't loosen them right off, they just need to take the tension off. Now, that plate behind there shouldn't be difficult to turn, so just play with the tension of your bolts until it turns freely. If you're having to force it, uh, just keep loosening it off until it turns. So, we have our belt. I get a notification every time I'm recording. That's annoying. Now we're just looking. Sometimes uh, these belts can be directional, um, but this just looks like any old way will do. I reckon I can get a little bit more tension out of that. Uh, or less tension, I mean. There's our culprit. There always seems to be one that stops the whole thing from turning. Now that that's slipped on, we just do the opposite. We hook it. Now we're going to turn it clockwise to move this whole assembly back, which will put the tension on that belt. This is what we're working from. Let's just turn this wheel. These are our notches that we put the tool in. All right. Now, this is really hard to see. It's a lot easier to see in person, obviously. But you see this crescent shape, that's how much room we've got to put tension on the wheel. Um, obviously you, you loosen it off, you move it around to the end point. Now the key to remember is it'll turn freely until it hits that limit. 
once that's done you've got no further play um, so trying to force it down is just going to end up bending or breaking something the next thing to do and do not forget this step is to retighten the bolts So just like with tightening anything else, do them all up finger tight first and then do the final tighten at the end uh, after you've already got a snug, even fit. Our belt is on, cover's on. Let's try and start it up for the first time in a few weeks. All right, a little bit of choke. Now the ongoing problem is the pedal as it's constantly contacting the wheel. Now this is what shredded this belt in the first place. It had nothing to do with the quality of the transmission. What was happening is as I was pedaling, the wheel was constantly hitting the drive line and this eventually loosened it just enough to the point where it was shredding. Uh, because the bike was working fantastically until I was pedaling. Um, so what we have to do now, as you can see, it's already loose. I've got to get the grinder out and we've got to take off a whole heap of meat from that pedal. So. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is take the pedal right off because it will be easier to grind. I don't actually have much material left on this to actually grind off because you can see I went pretty heavy. So all I can really do now is to take the corners off too. So where is my shifter? Yeah. Now, I like this shifter. I had to modify that to get my coaster to break off this bike when I first built it. One of the first things I ever did with my Dremel was a, a bit optimistic of me, but it works, is I ground all of that material away because I didn't have a, a, a flat spanner. So basically my plan is to take as much off the top edge there as I can. And just get as close to that thread as possible. Alrighty, so I've been busy with the grinder and if we can see there, I've taken off as much as I possibly can without... Can you even hear the flies? They're everywhere. Disgusting. Uh, so if that's still hitting, there's not much more I can do other than grind a groove through the top there. But we'll see how we go with this first. All right, so I had to get the grinder back out and did what I thought I would have to do and cut an extra groove down here. 
uh, because it was still contacting. I, I tried loosening the mounts and shifting uh, the engine up, but the problem with that is this whole assembly here it contacts the frame and it's completely missing the area that I ground out on this frame to begin with. Um, it's just the way that it, it, it sits. There is not really any way. Uh, you can see by that damage that I've done there that originally I had the motor cocked further forward, which would have brought this wheel up. But it just it doesn't tighten down like that. It, it just doesn't. Um, so anyway, if we can get a shot in from the back here, can we see? Maybe from this side. As you can see, and maybe maybe you can't, but the clearance we have in that pedal is so small. but it's now no longer contacting. So the good news is, the engine's running really well. Um, I have ground as much as I possibly can off that pedal, and I can still feel it uh, tapping. Not as violently as it was in the first place, but if I don't try and sort that out, um, I'm going to end up having the same thing again. I think the way to go is just try buying some aftermarket wide crank pedals. Uh, because these ones that came in the kit, they were never wide enough to begin with. It was stupid. Stupid. Um, so, we've come out to the pine truck again. And we're going to take this beastie up and down some dirt roads on cruiser tyres. What could possibly go wrong? So, the wind noise, unfortunately, on my little chest camera there. I don't know how well the video is going to turn out. We've only got about half a tank of fuel. So we'll have a quick burn, uh, and then we'll head home. Now, having just put the camera away... I feel like it might rain, so hopefully we don't get caught in it. Mask on, because I'm a good little citizen. Except for the fact that I'm riding an unroadworthy, unregistered vehicle.
The Mark IV is falling apart. I could hear this thing rattling. Yet another bolt's fallen out. And I don't think I have any cable ties left. This, I think, is the lucky last cable tie. Uh oh. That can't be good. One cable tie is not going to cut it. I'm getting gassed out by fumes here. My only option at this point is to remove the uh, pack or the, the pack rack completely. Two flies. Well, look, YouTube. This is exactly why you carry tools with you. Because of something as simple as this rack falling out. I mean, black tape, I could have tried. I don't have my full set of Allen keys, unfortunately. I wonder if I can jam that in there or something. Oh, hello. We can just do this. That's how flimsy that material was, I just bent it out. That's so bad. Just in case the little camera missed it. Obviously there's no suspension on this bike. The uh, pack rack came loose. I couldn't fit it in my bag, but luckily in my bag I had a big roll of black tape and we've just strapped it around the handlebars. Now, as dodgy as that is, that means I don't have to dump a broken rack down by the side of the road. These mounting points have had it. But what I can do is exactly what I did on the Mark V, which didn't have mounting points is I can just bore that out and stick a bit of 6mm rod through it and then I can potentially remount that rack uh, but we'll uh, add that to the list of things that I need to do for this bike There's the obviously the rear guards missing it looks very very bare and forlorn without that uh, signature rear guard on it and no rear rack on it either 
It's looking a little bit beat up, poor old Mark IV, but look, we're going still. Look, one of the other things I do have to sort out is I've got a bit of wobble in the wheel. Can I show you there? Oh, that's a lot of wobble in the wheel. So we're going straight home now, as short as route possible, before this wheel just... That's a brand new wheel too, shit. Um, yeah. So, poor old beaten up Mark IV bike. That engine is fantastic, by the way. Thumbs up for the four stroke. But on this frame, unfortunately, I think it might be a little bit too much. Uh, this bike is getting to the point where it's dangerous to ride. Obviously, things just rattling loose. I have had so many things rattle off this frame. Uh, let's get it home before it becomes critical. Now, camera, are we still recording? Yes, we are. That hill up here. Is a bit of a monster. Now, by the time this video goes live, I will have finally uploaded the video of uh, the giant Talon e-bike. Flying me up those hills. Now, with the proper e-bike, yes, I do actually have to pedal. Now, I am not fit, not at all. And that little champion of a bike got me to the top. Did not have to walk. You cannot ask for more than that, really. That's why we like motorised bikes. That's why we like e-bikes because it does make it easier to get from point A to point B. And sometimes in my case to C through to D because I talk a lot about how worn out this bike is, but it is because this frame has done well over 800 kilometers. Now, I've seen idiots on YouTube claiming they've gone, oh, 10,000 miles on a motorised bike and they are talking absolute shit. Because there is no way that these bicycle frames are gonna withstand that kind of distance, that kind of vibration and punishment. They just don't last. They're not designed to be driven by motors. That's why these are a hobby. They're not a reliable form of transport. They're not gonna last you years and years and years. You do what I do, and when your frame wears out, you put your motor on a new frame. I can guarantee that the motors, if you look after them, will outlast your frames. And, look. As you know, I've got plenty of spare parts to choose from. I've got a box with two broken motors in it that I could potentially fix up. I really need to sort out that rear wheel. That is, that is quite terrible. I knew it was bad, but I think the riding is making it worse. All right, let's get this broken old girl back home.
right, so the Mark IV, this new belt works perfectly. Uh, now, I will say for anyone who's like, oh, belt, belt drives are crap. The only reason this failed is because of me. Uh, I didn't set up my wheel clearance properly, and I'm the one who broke it. Now, this engine is fantastic. It, it really is. It's got so much torque. And it just, it loves flying along at full throttle. It really does. Um, it really is a fantastic bit of kit and worth paying the extra couple hundred dollars for. Uh, provided you've got a big enough frame. I never thought twice that uh, this cruiser frame would be too small. Um, so as I pointed out in the video, I've got... Oh, shit, there's another problem. I've got a lot of play uh, in the bearing in there, so wheel's going to have to come off again, um, and I'm going to have to try and sort out that um, that play in the wheel. And once I do that, we should be pretty well fine. Obviously, uh, we're looking very, very bare here. This tyre is getting well worn. It's probably, you know, I mean, come on, man. Who who does over 800 kilometres on a bike tyre? That's crazy. Uh, that's due for replacing. But the real question is, how much longer is this frame even going to last? Um, not long, I don't think. cannot possibly grind any more off the pedal. It, it's already sketchy and loose enough as it is. Like it, it, It's at that point where I have to decide, do I retire this frame for good or not? Um, so if I can't sort out that wheel or something else breaks, I might just have to be done with it. Which raises a question I had is, well, what do I do with that, that motor? Now, the plan was always to stick one of the two-strokes on the Mark V bike, but I wonder, would I be better off putting the four-stroke on instead? So, I don't know. Maybe you guys tell me what you think I should do. I don't really throw it to the audience that often, but there's quite a few of you who keep coming back and watching my videos. So do you want to see me trying to fix a broken two-stroke? Which means going through that box there and looking for spares. Or do I whip this motor off this bike and stick it on the Mark V? I think that would involve detailing this engine, painting it black. So let me know, is that what you want to do? Do I fix up the Mark IV and keep it running? Or do I stick the four-stroke on the black bike and detail everything, get rid of all the shiny parts and paint it all black? Let me know.